This small chart comprises common aphasias and the features which are typically seen in them. Word production, repetition and comprehension. It's important to remember the difference between transcortical motor aphasia and Broca's aphasia wherein TCMA repetition is preserved whereas in Broca's aphasia repetition is affected. The difference between the Wernicke's aphasia and transcortical sensory aphasia is again repetition wherein repetition is preserved in transcortical sensory aphasia whereas it is lost in people with Wernicke's aphasia. Conduction aphasia, typically repetition is affected with the preservation of word production and comprehension. Global aphasia is one where word production, repetition and comprehension is affected. There are four important pure illnesses or lesions. For example, pure word deafness, pure word dumbness, pure word blindness and pure agraphia. Pure word deafness is nothing but a problem in understanding the spoken speech. It is also called by various other names as shown on this slide. Pure word dumbness is a problem in the production of a spoken speech. Pure word blindness is a problem in understanding the reading material. Pure agraphia is a problem where one has difficulty in writing spontaneously or in response. Nominal aphasia is a type of aphasia where people have difficulty in naming the thing but they could possibly describe it. For example, if you show them a mobile phone and ask them what is this, they would possibly uh, tell uh, uh, this, this is uh, a box like thing which we use to call people. I, we we, we text people, but uh, what when you ask them what's the name of it, they kind of describe it rather than actually getting to the point of telling it's a mobile. That's called as nominal aphasia, which typically happens in angular gyrus lesions. Thalamic aphasia basically is a person who has a fluent paraphasic speech where comprehension and speech production is absolutely normal but to have naming difficulties that is thalamic aphasia. Striatal aphasia or striatocapsular aphasia is one which depends on whether it's an anterior lesion or a posterior lesion and the anterior lesions typically mimic the Broca's aphasias. The posterior lesion of the striatocapsular area leads to Wernicke's aphasia respectively. The crucial differentiator here is the tone changes which is the marker for striatal aphasia. We all know left side of the brain plays a major role in language. Have you wondered what can happen if the equivalent areas on the right side of the brain are affected, like the Broca's area, the Wernicke's area. If the similar areas on the right side of the brain is affected, then language is particularly affected in the form of prosody of speech. What is prosody of speech? Prosody of speech is nothing but an ability to understand the emotional aspect of the language while speaking or to understand the spoken language. When the Broca's equivalent area on the right side of the brain is affected, you typically see motor aspects of prosody being affected. Whereas, when the Wernicke's equivalent area is affected on the right side of the brain, then sensory aspects of prosody is affected. With this, we come to an end to the topic on aphasia. Go ahead and read further in the Brain e-course. Thank you very much.